We are going to see them go back to the blue side, though, and this time they're just going to right away just take away that body. I guess showing, hey, we don't care if Rookie gets his hands on the Talia as long as we have something that can single him out. Because, again, kind of sad to say for Fotic, but even in the last game, really didn't have the best game. Still was almost the person getting caught out and then causing NIP to lose. So I think for JDG, as long as you have the tools to focus on Rookie, that's really all you need. I'm just going to say right now, it's an ace angle for Rookie. Without the, the Talia, the Ari is big options. I, I'm saying it's going to be an ASOL angle. I don't know what the rest of the draft will look like. I can feel it in my bones. Or is it Talia? Yeah, go. Well, they go for it. Yeah, there we go. I mean, 40% of the team's damage in the last game when you have a Tristana right alongside you is absolutely ridiculous. That's so, true. I understand going back to the pick once again, but again, I feel like with having the Vi, they are set up much better to be able to deal with it. And I expect JDG to just keep going back to, to the things that they've rounded out with the four. We see the Nautilus hover right now. If they wanted to go towards the Zeri with it, I think it'd be totally fine because we know that's where Ruler and Missing can perform. Ruler as well, not really having the greatest performance in that game three. Going to need to tighten it up a little bit. I wonder what Aki will end up going for alongside this Talia later on in the draft. JDG likely to go for an AD carry hit. Ruler going to take away that Jinx. It's been Ooh. such a power pick. It's also been specifically a power pick for Photic. So not only is it a good scaling pick for the side of JDG, it's also a bit of denial. And Aki goes for the Nocturne. It was banned earlier in the series. It's something he has succeeded on in playoffs dramatically. And that's another thing that, that going for this Jinx kind of just set up for. You set up for this Nocturne to potentially have a huge amount of success against this immo immobile AD carry. You know Aki loves to pick it. In my mind, it's where NIP have looked most confident when they have the Tilly and mid, the Nocturne and jungle, just all of these different tools to be able to collapse onto one person. And it looks like now you're trying to make sure that you now can't find Ryo and can't bully out Rookie in the mid lane by taking away that end. So banning AD carries now at JDG, taking the Kai'Sa away from Photix so we can't follow up on the dive. Probably want to ban something like the Zaya as well, honestly, but maybe Zeri could be the option. Zeri often locked in alongside dive compositions, but the Zaya just, you know, with the Rakan there, it's not just a good pick for Photic, it's also a good pick for Dwo. Yeah, now NIP having to round out with an AD carry. I'm interested to see where they go. Again, you... you mentioned the Zeri it feels that they're gonna have to go with something a little bit kind of standard that is just gonna scale up and not really play with the rest of their their dive setup so far they end up taking away the rex side which makes sense i think everyone knows by now that this seems like Blondre's absolute favorite champion yeah. i wonder now if he just goes towards the tf because it really feels like those have been the two gears rex or tf and it works well with the nautilus with the buy like there's plenty of follow-up on the potential picks i actually they are very good at following up on picks as well. Like the cage, yeah. when you've got some hard CC to set you up, is really powerful. And Yagao going to go for this one. I feel like this has been a pocket pick for Yagao for a great many years at this point. It always brings out in the right angle. Exactly, right? We've already seen it once in playoffs. Uh, they brought it out against Weibo. was against the Talia, so they feel confident going towards it again. And JDG, looks like they're going to go with the complete shakeup. So if people yeah. wanted to see, like, stark differences in draft. Uh, that's what they're bringing through this time, especially if they lock in the Soren. I mean, look, look at, at our kind of three laners uh, yeah. all set up to go the distance. Absolute team fight, Compare. I just want to say, I looked up Yagao's stats on the Vega. He's 13 and 4 over his career. 76.5% win rate. This is a pick that, again, it's not something he plays often, but when he pulls it out, the angles are good. Powerful lock in here for Yagao. In the mid lane, scaling across the board for JDG. And NIP, once again, with a more proactive side of things, thanks to that Talia, thanks to that Nocturne. A level six is going to be big for both teams with these junglers. I mean, the, the name of the game is going to be proactivity for NIP, right? Especially on that top side where they're going to have Pryo with the Rex side. They're going to be able to get Pryo in mid. They, they have this jungle that they can enable. Uh, and really being able to steamroll the game. I, I think stacking up four dragons quite early is going to be something that we should look at for IP. So for JDG, it's about some of the defensive vision they can get down earlier on. Kanavi being able to spot out where Aki is and, and you know, prevent or, or defend against the aggressive plays that they're going to be looking for. See if they can defend it. I mean, JDG have been so good at defending. But I think, like, it was the second game of the series where... We saw them consistently yep. weathering the storm of, against the potential dives from NIP being able to clear those waves. 
see if they can replicate that kind of performance. Feels a little bit tense. NIP again against the ropes. If they could win here, push us to five, it would be truly something special to witness. Rookie once again on that Talia. A JDG changing things up and going old school, going slow, team fight focused, which feels like classic JDG to me. Yeah, I mean, right, this this feels like where JDG thrived, hell. I mean, I'm starting to think, is this Flandre on top, or are we going all the way back to Zoom with, with how much <laughs> this looks like those old JDG compositions? Man, I miss Zoom. I miss Zoom. Here we go, game four. I mean, much if you replace mid jungle with like Zoe Graves, this is legitimately a 2020 JDG composition. Just yeah, takes literally. two, just takes two changes. Different roster, but uh, you know, as much as things change, they stay the same or something like that. NIP though, a bit more proactivity. Uh, the Rex I top definitely not something we see in 2020. Uh, Zeri also, uh, you know, believe it or not, not available in 2020. Yeah, so, uh, you know, sadly didn't have that. You know, back then it was all about the Aphelios, uh Oh, yeah. Those good times. But I do got to say, I'm, I am a bit worried with JDG in terms of, again, this could potentially just really let NIP do whatever they want on the map. So a lot's oh. going to be down to that decision making. Still, though, we have seen where Nip can falter is the decision making in mid to late game. So if JDG do make it to that point, you, you really know yeah. that's where NIP can fall apart. I think, like, when you look at the compositions, like, NOP, it's not like they don't have scaling. You know, Zeri, Talia, they're perfectly fine going into the late game. You've got a tank top. It's not... Even the jungles kind of have similar MOs at, at different stages of the games. Um, it's not really just about that, though. It's also about, like, like you say, the decision-making we've seen from either team at different stages of the game. It does feel like JDG have been pretty comfortably the better late-game team out of uh, these two squads. Yeah, definitely having a better understanding, I think, of the map. We, we've seen them, especially Flandre, caring about side lanes in this game, just making sure they get a lot of that prep work done before they ever make their way onto objectives. But need to see what junglers are doing right now. Kanavi starting towards spot, making his way up towards top. Not going to have a whole lot of options with where he can look to play because he has to be afraid of potentially being matched with the strength of NIP's early laners. And how, look, he knows he has that strength looking for the aggressive invade yeah. into this blue side jungle. Lucky found a solo kill early on in the series. He's on that Nocturne, moves straight on in, forces Kanavi away. And the smite comes out from Kanavi. So at least forcing that smite. Flame choppers down, but Photic flashes away, but Joel caught up by the CC. Heal comes on through, and a nice W from Joel dodges the hook from missing. Yeah, really nice from missing to, to just go forward so aggressively. Photic clearly having the respect and the fear there uh, that he could have gone down in Kanavi. After having to run away from his wolves, coming down here and both jugglers much. We're, we're back to the Bakhtagon. We're back to the good old days. <laughs> the start of the split was all about the bot 3v3. And after most of the split kind of moving away from that, going towards scale and playing around grubs, now we are back. Kanavi on the bottom side. Aki trying to do this grump. Kanavi doesn't have vision of the enemy jungler. He's just going to go for that crab. Yeah, you can see Missing just angling over to make sure uh, in case Aki had started to move over, maybe Joel starts to work his way towards that tri brush. You can prevent anything from going on. Shouldn't be that surprised with the trades going in favor of Rookie and mid. They have been consistently in this series. You even expect them to, again, with the picks that Yigao has been leaning into. And with JDG, a lot of it's probably just going to come down to trying to, to, to stay even in CS. I mean, I guess you don't expect that much from Nip that early on anyway, right? Again, it's Paranoia yeah. and Weaver's Wall being those... Hell, even the Quickness uh, being the three big tools for NIP. I can't help but chuckle every time the camera pans over Vagar and Yagao's there on the Leprechaun Vagar skin. It's like the the skins that were made back in, I don't know, whatever, 2012 versus the skins that are made now. It's like a whole skin line and all of the animations have changed. And back then, it's like... My guy's a leprechaun now. <laughs> like, all the spells are the same, but, but I'm slightly greener. I, you know, I, I also hope his logic is something like, it's lucky. Or just that, you know, just, just something very basic. Who knows? Maybe this is the skin he plays with every time. And why it's why that win rate is so cracked. Yeah, the look of the Irish pulling him through. 
Uh, our whole production team and striker. <laughs> they, they just, they can't believe their eyes. They're, I'm sure they're over the moon about this one. Yeah, I mean, is, is this cultural you're... appropriation? <laughs> it might be. <laughs> Okay, Budge, we got the grubs coming up. I the grubs are up. Jugglers running into each other. We see you go going for went for the reset. He was, was gonna have to TP in, but I don't really know if this JDG could force him off of this. Yeah, Kenavi, he throws up the emote, but he didn't actually get the grub. Uh, Force the wait, and that will be Aki grabbing all three, I believe, as Kenavi went over to his wolves. Missing and roller. Trying to pressure in this bottom side. Minus CS lead for roller, but nothing too crazy coming out there. As it will be three groups taken by Aki. Drake still up on the map. JDG, Pings. Actually, no, Pings coming out from NIP on towards that Drake. Aki going to go for the reset now. You know, being up a bit in terms of XP. Going to have those two long swords. So they should have the window where they can just uh, start making their way down to start up this Drake. How rookie, rookie already here. Weaver's wall. Brother missing could be in trouble. No flash available for missing. The hook doesn't land on the wall either. Knock up after knock up after knock up. And missing will fall. First blood for Photic and NIP starts strong. And we've seen many times that Rookie's willing to give up waves in mid to make these plays. Does it here? Takes advantage of a window where he knows missing doesn't have flash. Uh, and just cuts off the escape route. This is why I was saying I'm I'm was kind of afraid for JDG in terms of how much scaling. They've leaned into it's going to give NIP a lot of freedom. Rookie moves into this mid lane. Yagao has that flash available. Rookie sat in the baby cage. He's not going to be happy about that one. You know, he's going to be screaming for his mom in a second. Oh, we know that's smolder, not Talia. My bad. Uh, the baby cage, though, not, it's going to be enough to di dissuade the play onto the mid lane. Joao had roamed up too, but with the crab taken. And with, uh, with Ruler resetting, maybe there's an angle for Drake, but maybe with Kanavi in the area, deciding against it. I'm surprised that, that they don't feel confident leaning on it. Maybe going to wait for the wave to get pushed down by Fotic now, which while going for that reset. Like I said, in my mind, it should be one of NIP's win conditions is, is getting these started and stacked up as quickly as possible. Then, right, you're going to be pulling JDG in the team fight even earlier. Going to have that that window to where you can very easily get Aki and Rookie onto Ruler and Yagao. Yep. Rookie gets prior mid. Can lean over towards that Drake. I think Aki has started it. I think he's pulled it out of the pit, if I'm not mistaken, on the minimap there. And it looks like not even needing the laners to move over either. There is a ward in the area. So it's spotted, I think, by JDG. Hard to say whether or not that ward can see it. They certainly know that the Drake's not in the pit. So it's, even if they can't see the Drake, they, yeah, they probably know what's going on. They also know that, you know, that Drake is not theirs. That Drake belongs. 10 IP, you can see Kanavi Ooh. reacting quite well. <laughs> Kanavi I start... really wanted you to eat your words there. <laughs> he did, but not going to be able to make it happen. I love that Kanavi immediately goes for the invade on top side. Doesn't overstay either. Aki making his way over, and hell, even Flandre having the information that, that Shanji started to move back. So oh. nice job of respecting those small advances. Rookie forced to flash out from the cage. Just a Bit of a show from Kanavi is enough to force that summoner out. I feel like most of the laning phases of this series, Rookie has had his flash on cooldown. Like so many of these plays, he's managing to flash out of. But crucially, it's oh, been they've rarely got the forge punished. Gone. Maybe we get it punished this time. The baby cage sets up the knockup. Look at the combo out from JDG. Kanavi grabs the kill. I'm so happy to see Flandre doing this too, because back in the day on EDG, Flandre was one of the best top laners at like moving down and helping out with mid lane. Again, you could just influence from, from such a long distance with that call of the Forge God. And between that, the cage, the ult on Kanavi, like my God, if Rookie ever walks up and, and isn't even hit by the cage, just in the middle of the cage, he's gonna have to either die or if it's flash up flash every single time with how much distance that can cover. It's so frustrating to play against. Could be a Mikhail's angle, honestly, for, for Juo, just for anyone that happens to get caught by one of these stuns. Denying that potential follow-up CC chain could be invaluable. I don't know he goes for that, we'll have to find out. Missing, could be knocked up down in the bottom side. His hook was denied as well, so that's a flash out from the enemy Nautilus. Nicely played by Juo. Exactly right. Like you said, uh, we've seen Missing be on point with the hooks all series long so far. So the fact that Juo was able to shut that one down is massive. We can see now, though, Shanji finding Pryo on top side, which is leading to these grubs. JDG clearly wanting to stop this though with Ruler making his way over two. Is it going to be four to two again? Kanavi into the pit. As you say, 
Uh, Ruler moving up, and Flandre TPs to the bottom side. Surely that's enough for NIP not to contest this one realistically. They don't want that fight without their AD carry. So just making sure that the mites don't go through. And again, with a composition that, that might be able to, to start inching ahead a little bit sooner than JDGs, they're already sitting at a 1k gold lead. I think denying those mites, uh, if those pushes do start coming through, is, is a huge swing for them. And now you expect JDG's bot lane to probably sit up here for a couple of waves before they rotate back down before the next dragon spawns. And I'd be hoping to find an angle where they could punish the Loki being incredibly patient. Chanji trying to play some vision, missing steps on in. Knockup chain comes through, missing low on HP, but straight onto Ruler. Aki dives, Chanji along with him, and Ruler, not long for this world. The Queen of the Void takes the kill. And now, looking for Morris, Rookie flies into the play as well. They're snowballing the fight like crazy. NIP, they want this early lead. Flash comes out, Baby Cage, to defend the jungler. Great use of their window to make the play happen. The, the patience from Aki before looking for it now. Again, pushing the gold lead further even more. And <laughs> spreading, spreading the kills out across their carries, right? Rookie, Fotik, and Shanji all sitting at one apiece. And Same seeing the replay look, here. Yeah, it felt quite aggressive from missing, honestly, to check this. Yeah, clearly just not expecting uh, for this many members to be up towards the side of the map. I think they should have figured it out with, with how Rookie was leaning over and then Ruler just being left by his lonesome. There's really no counterplay for those dives as JDG. They're always going to be able to find access to the Jinx. Honestly, like the longer this goes, JDG's really only hope is going to be helping him peel off at least one, find a kill to get excited and then be able to escape yeah. on his own. But we are a long way off from, from that being the play for JDG. Now we're at a point where uh, items coming out for Nip, right? Static Shiv already picked up. Shanji already having the Sunfire too. Yeah. I've got to say, people that came in saying we want JDG to change tack. Uh, take it back. <laughs> I want to get back to the previous games because this is not it. They are falling so far behind now. This is the first uh, significant gold lead like this that we've seen from NIP today. Feels like they are really running away with things. Drake coming up in 35 seconds as well. And you just know it's got NIP written all over it. And that's why it was a surprising pivot by JDG to, again, lean so heavily. That they, oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, I can't force the flash. Yeah, Event Horizon will keep him safe in the end, but with a flash down especially, and Ruler's flash and cleanse on cooldown, missing with no summoners, Kanavi with no summoners. It's, I mean, there's yeah. just no universe you're contesting this. Like, you, you can't do anything. You're not going to be fighting for the strike. If you start seeing them lean heavily towards one side of the map, you're going to have to back off. You could very easily get dove. And I appear taking turrets across the map. Like, this is going to start getting oh. out of hand. TP coming through. It, oh, I thought it was Flandre. It's not. It's Yagao. Flandre's on cooldown. Shanji is actually about to come off a cooldown. You don't want to commit to this fight, JDG. There we go. Shanji going to use his TP. Knockup lands onto missing. The flick back is there. Not only will they get the Drake, they get a pick on top. NIP really getting everything they want from JDG in this game. Their backs were against the wall and they're making it work. Izaki not even going to give a chance for that one to go over. Oh, there was a ward. Kanavi tries for it. No flash available for Kanavi. He's sacrificed his life. No, maybe he's got onto Fotik. I don't think anything's going to come of this one, but I'm wrong. Daki dives in and Rookie arrives. The Avengers have assembled and Yagao is Thanos in this one. Snap your fingers to that. Ends up going down. NIP find another one. I could empathize with what Kanavi was going for, right? Because if you can even deny one of these drakes, at least you're buying yourselves more time from, from that potential elder fight that'll go on later on. But we might not even get there at this point. NIP uh, really starting to build this lead up. Sure, Flandre is getting some alone time in topside. But that really doesn't mean matter at all yeah. to NIP. Congrats, you've got a 7 CS lead on Orn. Like, it's not exactly going to win you the game, is it? My goodness, NIP off to the races. It feels like it took them two games, but they have woken up. Game number three goes their way. And now, game number four, way ahead of the curve on this one. Shanji's going to finish off this tier one in the mid lane as well, as Rookie uncontested down for that bot tier one. He doesn't have his TP available, doesn't have his ult available. So Herald should go the way of JDG. JDG going to be able to, to look for this one, but still, 
it, it feels like they're still waiting on opportunities. I mean, hell, we saw from the last yeah. strike, right? JDG aren't going to shy away from fights. But... <laughs> so much. <laughs> we might get another one right now! Aki doesn't have his own ultimate. Trying to steal it with a Q. Herald taking a missing. Spell shield on the hook. The Ornhorn horn goes wide as well. Rookie corralling into the mid lane. Ruler. Oh, that's, <laughs> that blue ward saving his life there. Rookie's desperate for it. Flashes and finds Ruler as well. The cleanse does nothing and he's taken out of the picture. Shangji tanking for his team as Photic is untouched. And NIP just annihilate JDG. Two go through for Photic and into the mid lane they roll. <laughs> this game is snowballing out of control so quickly. 15 minutes and we're already up to about a 5k gold lead like there isn't even anything we can see them transition this into because you, you've already taken dragon you've already taken all the objectives on the map only that bot lane outer turret really being the only prize left for nip they're nowhere near it so now it's gonna be about getting resets to come out playing for that is we actually see another item finished up for photic uh right before we came out of this replay with the runons now being done they look for the engage i, I think they they know right hey aki shouldn't have his ult up yet this might be the timing we need call the forge guy doesn't connect but once again this man comes in and is an absolute hero for the side of nip i mean i guess they were already winning this game so maybe hero's a little bit too much of an over exaggeration but he starts the fight bunch and starting the fight was all they needed to do yeah. because again why are jdg even looking for this I mean, to be fair, he has been an absolute hero because look at his score, 1-1-6 one, one, right now. He's one assist away from being the Master Chief in this one. He's <laughs> had almost 100% kill participation. It's a fantastic Talia game. And I do think we're getting towards the point where the conversation has to start going into do you ban both the Talia and the Ari against I... Rookie when he's able to make these things happen? I, I I don't think that could really be the conclusion. I, I think it can be done, right? Like, like he's been good on Talia, but this one, again, was the, the boldest JDG Look, draft to me. Giving so much away early. It's rookie. Everything is different. I don't care about what's actually happening. All I care about is my narrative. It's all rookie. You know, man, you know, and then he's going to lock in the Yasuo next game, and it's <laughs> yeah. not going to get any easier. It's not, You know, that's the thing, right? It's not going to get easier if you take him off of this. It's not. Like, Rookie's still going to be an absolute legend on anything else. It's nice to see the NIP bot lane, though, I think, really having a much better game this time around. I mean, Joel was already doing pretty well on the last game, with Fontic, especially. Missing hooks in on towards Aki. Spell shield, though. To the Orn ultimate, last going out to safety. They'll at least secure themselves their own red buff. It's the small wins at this point for JDG. You know what? You know what? Actually, I think about it more. I don't think they need to ban the Talia, but I'm sold. I'm sold. I don't need to see JDG <laughs> getting flamed again because of not banning picks that, that, that people want them to ban. So, or take it away. Again, that was one of the, the things that was said before this series, right? AD pointing out, yeah. hey, uh, I think it was Trouble who said, like, you, you know, Yigao plays with Talia, plays incredibly well, too. Like, yeah, he always yeah. can go back to that. Talia's one of the picks I like to see Yigao playing, so definitely feels like it could be an option for them. I just want to point out as well, we've not really talked about Fotik this game. He's been pretty criticized as a player across this series. Uh, he's 5-0-0, and, and I realize he's on Zeri in the early game. A lot of this isn't just down to his own play. It's down to the setup from NIP. But the fact that you're hoovering up these kills as the Zeri this early in the game, the fact that you're at two items already as the scaling AD carry, it feels pretty good for Fotik. I mean, especially the fact that, again, to just be honest, like he was out of position in, in some of the, the other games. Hell, even the game they won, he was getting picked off. How's it happened this time? Has been, he's been able to be a, consort, a consistent source of damage for his team in this game, and, and that's what that's what NIP need him to be able to do. And I mean, it does become a lot easier when you have so many people on your team jumping to the back line, but still, the fact that it's giving him the space and he is delivering with that damage is, is a nice boon for NIP. 8-2. to two. It's not a bad little scoreline. And do you know, at the end of game two, Lyric... I'd pretty much given up on NIP. I was kind of, uh, I was kind of ready to call it because it felt so one-sided in those first two games. But NIP, pulling it out, coming out of the woodwork in the end, and now with an advantage in this fourth game as well. I don't want to jinx anything. I don't want to say too much, but they are on soul point, and they are five thousand gold up at twenty minutes into the game. This, this is feeling a little silver scrapey. Oh, I definitely think it is. I mean, uh, it, 
it would be hard in my mind for an IP to not be able to pull this one over the line with with how how hard it should be yeah. for JDG to actually be able to come out with a team fight win. You, you would need an overextension from an IP, which actually, as I'm saying that out loud, wait, that is always possible. <laughs> yeah, that is always, always possible, possible to come through. But Did if you JDG loses, we can jinx it. <laughs> this is an impossible loss for an IP. Uh. I do gotta say though, right? Like if you know, assuming that NIP do turn this into a win like they should, JDG really have to be kicking themselves, especially about game three. Last game, they were in a position where I think their highest gold lead was like five or 6,000 at one point in last game. It could have been a 3-0. Could have been a 3-0. But uh, weren't able to pull it across the line when when it was going to be easy. And now, again, with, with no. the plan they came in with, with how NIP have approached this too, it really looks like we're going to five. And that is a position where I could not have imagined JDG ending up in. No. I don't think many people were predicting five games today. And I think almost everyone was predicting a JDG win. But NIP in the driver's seat here. Man, can you imagine if JDG were to lose this series? They've been kicking themselves. Rookie finds another flick back. That's half of Kanavi's health gone. Laser in onto missing as well. Baron is up on the map. And that's Kanavi sent packing. Honestly, NIP can just start this up. And it looks like that's exactly what they're going to do. We're gonna see if they're gonna be able to find their way in. Old at least will give them the information that this one's going down, but still, Kanavi committed to the reset. He's nowhere close. Looking for a pick though. Not actually starting the Baron off. Well, they started it, but then peeling off again after the vision was there. Shanji, somehow, they go right back to able it. to get they go right back to it. Prio through the, uh, through the Titanic Hydra there. Just one-shotting the mini wave almost. NIP peeling off once more as Kanavi spotted on a ward. Denying all vision is missing. Might have stepped a bit too far forwards here. Needs to be a little cautious. Oh, rookie just got spotted out. Oh, the flick back doesn't land and they flash onto it, but the Zonyas is going to protect him. Almost all the CC denied, but the baby cage is enough. And now a knockup denied from Shanji. Tunnels away. It's a pick though onto rookie. A huge pick for JDG. And that was the discipline that we, we were talking about JDG had in game two, right? NIP were desperately trying to pull them into River, and they were going to section them off with that Talia wall with the angle that Rookie had. JDG weren't falling for it, and Rookie and NIP ended up getting a little bit impatient, and it, it, it gives over the, the reprieve that, that JDG were desperately hoping for. Yeah. And a fumble like that, you got to say, it's a rookie mistake, Larry. It's a rookie mistake. <laughs> no. As uh, gets caught out in the jungle. JDG, I mean, like, let's be honest, one pick onto Rookie, it's not changed that much in the scheme of this game, but it has denied the Baron play because it's a minute now until Drake. Exactly, right? It, it, it's prevented the snowball from happening right now. Again, that ward coming in so clutch, they dodge out on it, and then I love it. You just have to full send it while this team is nowhere around. They really commit everything to making sure that the guy goes down. So they yeah. buy themselves a bit of time, but at the same time, do they really when they been on this dragon timer the whole game and that is you know that's going to come to a head in, in 40 seconds not to mention rookie hill he's picked up his zonyas now off the back of using that arm guard in the previous play i, I will say that was one of the highest value stasis i've seen in a long time <laughs> like did eyes the ornal did eyes the vial did eyes a bunch of dps but then yeah i was playing the vega so <laughs> there's only so much you can do on that one and now we'll see Potentially a last chance here, honestly, for JDG, because if an Ocean Soul goes over, I'm not sure you're ever killing this Rex again. I'm not sure you're ever willing Ooh. to fight again. Flash from missing. Yeah, Knavi staying off on the side. It looks like he's going to try and consistently keep pressure onto Rookie, but still, you just got to... Uh, it feels like Aki, Shanji, these guys are such a big problem for Ruler. It's going to be really hard to enter, and look, Rookie's still playing off to the side. Rookie's been caught out here, does have that Zonyas available once more. Ornhorn lands onto the AD carry though, as Aki is just diving onto the back line. He's gone too deep on his own though, missing, traded, in kind as the rocket flies through. Fotix still alive, and that's who you've got to keep your eyes on. Kanavi dives onto him, but he falls, he's not tanky enough, and Dwell survives on the opposite side. In they go, as Shanji finds more. Four for Fotix before he falls, and Shanji finishes the job. And I'd be coming out on top once again in the team fight that matters. Now even going to be able to get their hands on the Ocean Soul. A 
absolutely massive for NIP as they grab Ocean Soul, they grab a clean ace as well. Maybe not clean, but an ace nonetheless. I like the idea to once again just try to pinch your way on to Rookie, but it's like, all right, Ock ends up going in too far, he goes down. But still, Rule on you now, you got never really get in a position to find damage on the Photic after that flash comes through. Rookie's doing a great job of zoning him out, and it opens up for Photic to be able to do so much, especially once Shanji gets involved and starts bringing this fight forward. Things just got a bit too separated for how NIP would have liked to play the fight, and NIP, and especially Photic, took advantage. Yeah, Photic as well. Like, Flandre missed a knockup onto him early on in the fight and with how low he got honestly that might have been the difference maker for the side of jdg if he could have just hit that pillar but either way all items it's important to mention starting to come through flandre has his and he's given over an improved infinity edge to ruler so we are entering that sort of scaling conversation in this composition it scales like no other out of all three lanes but does he scale as well as a 9-1-1, one, and one, Zeri? I'm not so sure. That's the thing, right? He's, he's a he's a full item down. Hell, more than a full item down because Votic also has two, you know, kind of smaller items components compared yeah. to rulers, just one. So really ahead in every way that he can be. And now we're at a point where flashes are down and flashes being down feels a lot more meaningful uh, for JDG with the dive that we were seeing. Again, Kanavi kind of functions in the same way, but it feels like there's more follow-up there for NIP side, and we're just gonna go straight back to the dance around the Baron, and NIP hoping that they could pull yeah. JDG out of their base. Feels kind of funny. It's NIP playing with the shadows, the ninjas in pajamas, as it were. Trying to, oh, that control ward's not denying the vision. They didn't see the ward though, so they They've got information on where that is, but the control ward, unfortunately, not quite deep enough in the brush. Won't matter. Photic still clears that vision anyway. Missing tries to move in. NIP start this Baron off. Playing with Fog of War. Trying to set up for something. Missing. Takes a chunk from Rookie. Using that Aegis just to keep himself healthy. Look at all the angles that NIP are playing in this fight. Like, Aki's far off to one side. You have Joel threatening another flank. Rookie waiting in the wings. So many different things that JDG need to worry about. They're so ready to dive onto Yagao or Ruler the second they get that opportunity. Then IP peel off of the Baron in the end. Don't takes a chunk, and here we go. The dive comes through. Shanji is behind everybody. Aki gets into the mix, and he's just one shot. Oh. The Crit Bloom gets a healing as well, but Ruler's down. As Ruler, uh, Rookie pulled in. Kanabi next to go, and Photic is untouched this entire time. Draw with a knockup to protect his AD carry. It doesn't matter how good it looked to start off with. NIP, they demolish JDG. And Lyric, I think we might just be going to five. <laughs> NIP pulled pulling it back, really dismantling JDG and showing them, hey, you need more presence in the early game. You cannot allow us to have this much freedom. Phenomenal early game, phenomenal mid game from NIP and punishing this draft from JDG. We do not want any more draft adaptation. Thank you very much. That's enough cooking in this kitchen. NIP push us to five on the brink of a reverse sweep. We go to Silver Scrapes. And again, the story would be so insane. Game three, it looks like JDG's. It looks like it should be a 3-0. But JDG, they make one mistake. NIP, rookie specifically in that game, takes advantage, brings it back. And then have such a dominant game for everything on the line. We're down to a best of one. And it's kind of insane to think how we got here much. <laughs> It's crazy with how good JDG looked at the first two games. I cannot believe we're going to five games, but NIP, they have come alive. They have evolved over this series. And now I honestly have no idea how this one ends. We're going into a break. Do not go anywhere. You do not want to miss game five.